Hello, and this is a crypto day morning. The date on the Julian calendar for the uh, Thursday, June 14, 2018. And even though it's a crypto day morning, and this video is mainly going to focus on cryptos, let's start off with silver as we can uh, start off making highs not seen in quite some time a year. Well, not against the US dollar, it's back to this high from April and noticeably but not much lower than the January highs and well, the September highs somewhat noticeable lower not in Canada let's take a look at this uh, against the Canadian currency as it has broken out above the resistance level of about 2170 or so it's gotten above this high above the September highs at levels not seen since June the 15th or 14th and if it can get above 2278 it would go back to levels not seen since June the 9th okay we'll see if it's able to hold this rally As markets are concerned and I like to talk about this on the crypto day morning because buying silver for cryptos is a fun thing to do but this whole trading range and I can lower the support level the bottom line it's been sideways for quite some time so it's important if this is, is going to stop going higher to hold it around this area. And whether I use this on the Canadian dollar or the US dollar or any other fiat currency, it has a long, long, long ways to go to break this neutrality as it's just been in this sideways move for quite some time. And the monthly chart is the one that I'm looking to use here. Still within the correctionary band here and against the United States currency. Also stuck within this 18. But the assuring thing is it's at the upper end of it. So if you start seeing the market holding in the U.S. side, $18. Well, I mean, for more than like at least to the end of summer. Then that's a very good bullish sentiment sign, but it's been a long, long wait so far. Let's move on to the dollar index, then on the cryptos. And the big reason why it's doing well in the Canadian currency is because of how the U.S. fiat currency has had strength against other ones since the breakout on April the 17th, as it has went from the 89 handle up to about 94 and looking to possibly break higher again but the bottom line is silver's having a great up day as the dollar index is having a nice green candle up too so i find that very interesting let's move on to bitcoin and we'll start talking about the short term and like always with everything you do your own risk own reward i'm performing analysis analysis how i see it and in some cases what i might be doing or what I am doing. I just don't know exactly what I'm going to be talking about the rest of this video is why I say it that way. Okay, so short term, single hour time frame after this sideways congestion, it had a leg lower, rally, and it's continuing on this sideways move. So it's developing this very, very tight range. It does make it difficult to try to trust some of these rallies as you uh, have been in a bear market. A lot of uh, lower highs, lower lows, that can work in two directions because oftentimes when you have uh, bear market rallies, they can be uh, oftentimes very, very nice uh, for moves, even in a bear market. And what I mean by that is that you're only going to get a small gain and you can pick away at a small play here and there if, of course, you believe the bear market is still in tune. And now we moved on to the daily term time frame price action well below the 18. So that's one of the targets I'm going to look for is a move to the 18 of lows, which is currently in at uh, about 7,000 right now. Obviously, it's going to be reducing, but not today. And that would uh, be just a possible area for where some sort of rally would happen. But when you make a move up to such an event or place, the 18 band, which is going to coincide with previous support at 7,070. That is it going to just the top from there and go lower? Maybe, but I look at it like a baseball game. You got the Houston Astros playing the Oakland Athletics today with Justin Verlander starting for Houston. 
I kind of think there's a better chance that Bitcoin goes to 3,000 before it has any type of rally, like above 14,000. Same move, a little over a 2x move is why I want to go both sides. Then there is of the uh, Houston Astros defeating the uh, Oakland Athletics. And Houston's a very good team, too. Um, Vegas is not giving Houston that high of a chance of winning, like 63%. I just think there's better than a 63% chance this is unfortunately going to happen, but I cannot mathematically put any type of confidently a confident number of what's going to be the case or likelihood of such. In fact, it's either going to it's either going to happen or it's not. But where we came from And while I'm drawing a line here, this is the area of the support that I find pretty big. For if you're in a situation where you support the level like it did, and there, it spent very little time in this area, it was a capitulation sell lower and then that bear market rally, in this case, almost a 2x move. The second time it came down there, it traded within this range, which is basically why I took the low and the high to be at this point. The resistance from April the 2nd coincides with the support from the end of May. And if you notice that this area price rally comes up anywhere within this, which is even north of 7,000, even up to 7,300 almost, and then you see it rolling over in any way, then you're looking at what I would call a typical situation happen technically. So it comes in here, and even if it goes down a bit more and does this too, same thing, and you see a pattern like this where it is resisting this band, which of course is support here and here, and leaving it, it's leaving a key area, the 23.6% uh, exponential long-term Fibonacci. That represents the lows from in here. So if you break this key level, I'd be looking forward to go to the next one, which is at the 38.2% down Fibonacci at around 3,000. For myself as a trader, risk reward management is always job number one. So I'm managing the situation. So if the event happens, that it makes it to 3,000, I got a game plan. And the basic game plan is the, uh, I've hedged or sold a calculated amount of Bitcoin before this thing was falling, not much, much before, but 7,500 is the lowest I sold and between 7,500 and 8,300. I ended up selling Bitcoin for like Tether and TUSD at the point of a move to 3000 then I will be buying Bitcoin, then buying altcoins. If the situation that it doesn't happen, that means the market's going to go higher or it's going to go sideways. And well, those positions will just remain in such and they can almost drift off into the sunset in a losing position, thus AKA hedge against down moves while the rest of my cryptocurrency portfolio should be in a euphoric type of mode. At least that's how I'm planning it to be. Let's move on to a few alts. PIVX on the one hour time frame. Yesterday comes down to this key Fibonacci line at 37,381. And, well, what was the low? 30. The low was uh, 3700. So small pierce below. That means since that point, it has rallied nice, at least within the 60 minute time frame. You had a situation at the 2200 hour timestamp yesterday night at 10 p.m. Eastern where it rallied up to this point, came back to the 18. Since then, I like how this has been holding and playing within the 18 highs. And it's just barely now breaking the range of resistance area. This thing was in a nonstop downtrend from this last high at like 58, 58 to 37. 
Does it look like we're going to be making a move and have a decent size leg higher or a decent gain higher? Question mark. And you no, know, but definitely a candidate for a trade as I'm looking at this now, which is why I'm putting this in. Like always, again, everything your own risk reward. That's the best part about this game. You either win, you lose. The profits are real. The losses are real. And let's finish it off with Tron. Pretty much a similar kind of setup. And these markets have been going down, of course, for quite some time. 60 minute time frame. So at the end of May, this thing fell from a thousand Satoshi down to about 600 and changed, giving back very close to 40% in just that time allocation. As far as legs lower are concerned, well, the previous one occurred at where we stand now at 672 as this line represents the June 10th and June 11th lows. And then this move to the low 600 mark is a significant leg lower. It passes the eye test from the line to where it went. So now it's an area of resistance. It established well at 657 to make this move. What I'd like to see happen, I'm not going to trade this in any form like this, but if I'm looking for a, uh, like a setup of sorts, I want to see this area in here become very good uh, resistance that it's going to have while it's holding 658-ish area, 655. So I like to see throughout the day this thing to chop back and forth in some form, show some strength within the 18 average of highs where I can get a confident setup that this could be ready for decent sized gains. But overall, I would rather and I am making trades, buys and sells based on the market movement. So when you have legs lower, that means you buy and you sell as they go higher. And when you have buy order cities been filling in and since like May here, the vast majority of the orders have been buys. Let me actually take a look at my statistics for this code. And from May 16th through the May 26th, sell 847, sell 885, sell 945, sell 956. And then from May 28th up to yesterday, by 876, by 817, by 778, by 706, and by 629. I've racked up a quite a few buys in a row, so I want to try to get as much profit on this as I can. 629, my last buy. Which means I could sell now. It's not a bad move going from 630 to 665. That's like 5%, but that's, that's not enough for me. So what I want to try to do is I got to buy last in here. I would be looking to make a sale. I'm probably closer to 700 and a break above that, but I need a good move to sell. Now, if I were to sell now, then I could put a buy order back in or look to buy back in when it comes down here. If I pass on selling and it goes down, that means I got to wait until it goes below 600 before I'd be looking to buy again. If it makes it closer to 700 where I get my sale, then I'll have to decide how deep do I want to wait to buy back again but mathematically, it really doesn't make too much of a difference as long as I am able to take advantage of the swings as they happen. It all works out. Thank you for tuning in and have yourself a great day. Bye-bye.